Hey everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book series recommendation video. Welcome back. So I am going to film this in a series of clips. Each book is pretty short in a series, but I'm going to film them hot off the press. Hopefully this is not going to be another 30 minute video. I'm going to try and keep it succinct, but I want to get the information to you while it's fresh in my brain. Because I think what I do is I read and I go dump and then I start something new and I go dump. So having said that, let's just get into it. So I am finally, finally, finally reading the birth the um, Birthright series, right? It's called, oh, the Brutal, Brutal Birthright? Is that what it's called? Brutal Birthright? It's Birthright, something Birthright. Series from Sophie Lark. And the first book in the series is Brutal Prince. And this is wonderful. It is so good. It's an enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers is not my favorite trope, but the way that Sophie Lark did it, if you do it well, it's good. And I know that it was good because I was pissed off <laughs> <laughs> through the whole book. So clearly the emotion that she wanted to draw from you, she drew from me because I was just pissed off like through the whole damn book. And I think what I do is I immerse myself in the experience and I put myself in the character's position. So the two characters are Colum and Colum Griffin, who's part of the Irish mob, and then the Italian mob, the, the female heroine, her name is Ada. Ada Gallo. So the Gallows and the Griffins have been sort of at odds with each other for years and years and multiple family members, uncles have been lost as a result of this like feuding war. And so the book starts off there. Okay. So let me go back to what I was saying. I put myself in these situations and I'm like, if Ada would have done that shit to me, I would have, girl, me and Ada would have been... <laughs> We would have killed each other in Act 1 and there would have been no book because I had just taken her out. I'm just like, you're not going to treat me like that. Like, so I think that's why I just like, as I read the stuff that Ada does, I'm just like, and then I read what Colin does and I'm just like, y'all are crazy because I would kill you. So anyway, so let's go back. So the war has gone on forever and ever and ever and they basically... They basically, there's a party at the Griffin's house for one of the younger daughters. It's her birthday party. The Gallows get wind. There's like five brothers. The Gallows get wind and one girl. They get wind that this party is happening. And so they're like, let's go. And Ada is like the baby. And she's like the ringleader. She's like, yeah, let's get in the car. And we're go you know we're going. And blah, blah, blah. we're going to go over there and cause drama. And that's exactly what she does. She gets to this house. And instead of respecting somebody's house, first of all, they're not invited to this party. They shouldn't be there. But instead of re respecting, and Ada's a brat, right? And her dad says, I have spoiled you. And this is the problem. So instead of respecting these people's house, what does she do? She goes and she snoops around and she snoops around and then she finds herself in this library. And as she's in the library, she picks up, you know, look, she's snooping. Basically, she goes through stuff. Make a long story short, Colum walks in. She doesn't want to get caught. She hides behind a chair. Colum sits down, starts reading, and he's there for a really long time. And she's trying to come up with a plan to get him out. And the plan that this chick comes up with is she's like, she's going to set the drapes afire because if there's a fire, it'll distract him and he'll be, you know, fixated on the fire and therefore she can leave the room. Now we all know, and she knows when she's telling you this, how the plan, how that plan worked out. It just went to hell in a handbasket. And everything from that point forward just goes haywire. They do extreme things to one another that are horrible and destructive. And as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh my God, this is the most dysfunctional and unhealthy relationship ever. But as time comes along and as things develop and the story develops, they work together. And the parents, the fathers of the two, the Griffins and the Gallows, they basically hatch this plan that you guys made this mess. We don't want any more death. You guys are going to have to figure it out. So it's going to be a forced arranged marriage situation. You made the mess, you guys figure it out. Because if you if we join our families and work together, we can stop this blood feud and we can be powerful in our own right. Because the Griffins have wealth 
and the gallows have the muscle behind it. And so when you put wealth and muscle together, you get an empire. And that's what the, the, the patriarchs, the two fathers of the family are really hoping to achieve. And so that's why they do what they do. So the story is very, very interesting. It's very fun. I feel like it could have been longer and it wrapped up pretty quickly and things got resolved very quickly. Whereas I would have liked to see it a little bit more, a little bit more dragged out. That's not the right term, but like a little bit more have gone into it. But I understand from Jen at the Book Refuge, we were talking and she was saying that as the stories progress, things get better and better and better. And I imagine as you immerse yourself more in the world, you become more familiar with the characters, then this story is going to be really fascinating and really great. So, so far for the first book, I gave it a four out of five star. I, you know, I liked it and I thought it was good. I liked how it ended up. And there's a suspense element, you know, there's obviously when you're working in a Chicago criminal empire, there are going to be characters that are go nefarious characters that are going to step up from your past that are also rival gangs and other situations that are happening. And so all of that plays out in this book as well. And so I'm sure we have not heard the last of the circumstances from these other nefarious characters, like there's the Polish gangs. I'm sure we're gonna find hear some about Russians at some point in the game, because Russians are always around. And then you've got the Italians and um, obviously they're the Irish as well. So as things develop, we will see what happens. So that was Brutal Prince, and now I'm moving into um, Stolen Air. And so like I said, there are gonna be books for every brother in the series. So it's really interesting because it's column, and then there's Ada's brothers are Nero, Dante, Sebastian, so all of them are going to get, get their own book, and I'm assuming that there's going to be an underlying ongoing storyline, and then each individual book is going to be about a different brother or a different sibling, and they're going to get their HEA, or that's going to be sort of concluded in that particular book, and then you move on to the next. Everything in the Brutal Birthright series has audiobooks out. Currently, when you move into the next generation with The Spy and The Rebel, and we'll talk about that as we get there, those books are not out on audio yet, so I'm going to see how I'm going to navigate that, but we'll get there. So let's hop over to the next clip so we can talk about The Stolen Air and see what my thoughts are about that. I'll see you over there. Hi, so I am back for clip two, and so I just finished Stolen Air, part two book two in the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark and I absolutely this is my favorite so far this is I like this book so much this is about the daughter of the Griffins so we know that the Griffins have three children they have Rowan I think her name is and Colum and Nessa Colum the oldest the prince of the Griffin the Irish Mafia has been married off to the gallows, Ada, the only daughter in that family. And so now it's Nessa's turn and Nessa, now remember in this book we had talked about that there was a incoming threat from the Polish mafia and the Polish contingency and exactly what I suspected happened, happened here. So in this book, Ada's brother, Dante, murders the father in here, the father of the Polish outfit. And so now his son, Miko, wants to take revenge on both the Gallows and the Griffins. And now that the Gallows and the Griffins have intermarried and have created this, you know, syndicate, you know, this non-stop powerhouse, whatever, you know, you have to get at them in different ways. And so Miko devises a plan that he is going to take captive Nessa, who is the sister of Colum on the Griffin side, and because Nessa is very close with Ada, a gallo, it's going to hurt both of their families, and he's going to hide her away in this mansion. And so what Sophie does in this book is really interesting. She turns it into, I'm not going to say it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's a Beauty and the Beast inspired. Miko lives in this very beautiful, once really grand castle, but it's very deserted. There's no happiness. He is a very brooding prince. Like he is, you know, he's gone through some severe trauma in his life. The father that, you know, that took him on and brought him into 
the world of crime and the crime syndicate basically did so when he was about 16 years old after something very traumatic happens to his sister which starts off in the prologue with and he's with him for about 10 years and he teaches him everything and that's the only father that he's ever known and he was gunned down brutally in the street by Dante Gallo and he's out he's never been the same he lives life in this drum sort of black and white existence and feels nothing for anybody at any time, not even during sex, does he really feel a great release. It just is something that he's engaging in and he doesn't really get a lot out of it until Nessa comes into his life. And Nessa is charming and innocent and sweet and is a ballerina and is very talented, but she's been, she's very childlike and she's afraid of her own shadow. And she hasn't had an opportunity to come into her own because she has been sheltered her whole life until she is in this captor-captive situation and she is discovering her voice in a roundabout way. And Nessa is a very interesting, intriguing character that is very subtle, but very powerful in her own right. And I love her because she doesn't have to be in your face and she doesn't have to be pushing her dominance and exerting, but she has a subtle strength, a beautiful strength. And I think anybody that comes in contact with Nessa is gonna love her and gonna wanna be with her. And that's exactly what happens in this story. And it is so beautiful. And it's definitely an enemies to lovers in the sense that, and I think that what I'm seeing at the Brutal Birthrights is that it is enemies to, everything is enemies to lovers because they're rival families, right? And so they have been born and bred, like, they, like Nessa says, I did not harm your family. However, I take on the sins of my father because I am part of that family. And so all the sins are wrought on the entire family. And in the beginning, Miko sort of looks at Nessa like you're weak. You're weak and your family did you a disservice by raising you to be a child and you can't even defend yourself. Like this is not, I want your tears. I want your pain. That's what's going to make me feel happy and feel relieved. And over time, like he is enamored with her and he has to work and he wants to work but she doesn't make him work to be better she just is who she is and he works to be worthy of her he wants the people around her to see he's worthy of her he wants her parents to see he's worthy of her and he becomes a better person as a result of her kindness and her beauty and her intelligence and her creativity and she writes these beautiful ballets and it's just a really cool story it's really beautiful so I gave this a five out of five star whereas this one for me was a four and because this was so over the top like intense like War of the Roses that I was like oh it's a little much I'm a little pissed off and angry through that so it's much for me but this was like right up my alley it was sweet it was beautiful it was loving it was steamy it was spicy it was just really really great so I am so so happy so now I am moving on to the next book in the series and that is book three and that is Savage Lover and I believe Savage Lover is Nero's story and Nero is one of the brothers on the Gallo side so the Italian mafioso so let's go over there and hear what I think about that I'll see you then hey so I wanted to jump on really quick I have friends coming over and so I just wanted to really quickly give you these hot off the press so I finished Savage Lover. This is book three in the Brutal Birthright series. And I gotta tell you, okay, so this book is about the youngest brother, Nero, and Camille. And as I was reading this, I was like, what just happened? Because we just came off of Stolen Air, and Stolen Air was really, really good. And so then going into Savage Lover, I was like, had high expectations, thought it was gonna be really good. And it read really young. Nero is really young. It read like, I, I just didn't care. There was nothing I cared about this. This was, you know, I, I don't even think, it's not even a friends to lovers, enemies to lovers. They've known each other for a really long time. Camille has, you know, um, her father who is, you know, ill. She comes from the wrong side of the track. She's very poor. She's like a tomboy. She fixes cars. You know, Nero loves cars. So they bond over this love of cars that they have. There also is this police officer that's after them. There's all kinds of stuff that's going on in here that I was just like, why do I care? Like I just, this was like, what what just happened this was so so pointless like there was nothing in here that I thought 
He was like basically a fuck boy. He like, you know, every girl on the planet loves him and wanted to hook up with him. And she's like, why does he like me? And you know, I'm very different. And there was this whole side storyline with like her brother Vic and who his paternity is, you know, because her mother worked at a strip club and one day she just showed up and dropped Vic off. And so it was clear that she wasn't, you know, her father wasn't the father of her younger brother. The story was all over the place. It was a hot mess. I gave it a three star. I didn't care about it. That's the end of that. <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't care about it. I was like, I don't understand what the point is. But I continued on with the series. Jen was like, keep going. I promise you it's going to get better. So I went into Bloody Heart. I've been waiting for this book. This is Dante's story. Dante is the oldest brother on the Gallo side. He definitely is brooding, dark. There's a story there, long history. He's gone into the military. He's a war hero. He's a sniper. You knew that there was a love that got away and we didn't know the scenario. And so this is a second chance romance. It starts off in the beginning with um, him meeting Simone and Simone comes from a very, very wealthy, really like 1% family. And they are just not going to accept the gallows because of their long criminal history. But you know, they're fated mates. They are star-crossed lovers. They're attracted to one another. They're going to just go all in. And Camille and Dante are, you can't keep them apart. They are super attracted to one another. They are, they desire one another. And so regardless of what their family says, they are, it's going to happen. It's going to happen regardless. And it does. And something happens in this book that midway through, and it's a trope that I cannot stand. And I got so angry and I got so upset because I was just like, who does that? I don't care what the circumstances are. For me, it is just not okay, and I was just upset. And so in the second half of the book, as things sort of wind up, you know, and it's, cool, it's, it's a romance, so it's gonna be an HEA, I just don't think enough time was put in to make right the wrong that was done. Because I don't want to ruin it for you if you haven't read it. If you've read it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. And then there's another sort of thing. that There are two things in this book that I don't like. And it was one of the tropes. And that led to, you know, this time frame that I don't like as well. And so I don't want to say too much about it. But it is definitely a second chance romance. It is a... And I'll say this because on the back... If you read the back jacket, you'll kind of see that there's a long time frame between how things happen. And we already know this if you've read, you know, the first three books in the series. You'll know that Dante has gone a long time between the time that he first met Simone when he was 21 and she was 18 and now when he's still single and what happens as a result of that. And so I gave this, I think I'm gonna wind up giving this a four star. It's better, this was just, I was like, what was the point of this? Nero does nothing. I don't see why I'm reading about Nero because I don't care about him. He doesn't contribute anything to the family. Like what is Nero doing? A whole bunch of nothing but racing cars and being yeah, a kid. It just read so young. Whereas this is much more sophisticated and much more older, you know, and there's much more pain and anguish and things that have to go into it. But I think as the story goes, it gets better and better. And the things that are happening, like you're getting to see um, the Griffins. You're seeing Ada and Callum from book one. You're seeing Miko and Nessa from book two. So it's kind of nice. You get to see the couples go throughout the series and you experience them. So I appreciate that and really like that as well. So I'm going to continue on with the series. Like I wanted to give you like my thoughts as we go. So this definitely has some tropes that I don't like. I'm frustrated with the heroine because like she needs to step up. She's just weak and I don't deal I don't want you to be overly aggressive and I don't want you to be weak either there has to be a balance in between like you don't let people walk all over you don't let people make decisions for you but you're not raging at everybody like Ada was either so it's like can we get some medium happy medium in here and some middle ground anyway so that's what I thought about that that's a four out of five star so let's move on to the next book and I'll see you in the next clip and I'll tell you my thoughts about that in a minute Hi, so okay, so I'm back now and I'm going to talk about Broken Vow and Broken Vow is this is the fifth book in the series. This is about the oldest sister in the Griffin and her name is Riona. So this is Riona Griffin. She is beautiful, intelligent, 
feisty, headstrong. She's an attorney. She basically, you know, is the brains behind the operation. She helps to make sure that if anything goes down, nobody's getting any kind of legal um, altercations. She's going to handle it and take care of it. And the significant other in this story is Raylan. And Raylan, we are introduced to in Bloody, Bloody Heart with Dante. So Dante and Ray, Dante is a gallo. Dante and Raylan served in Iraq and Afghanistan together. So they're army veterans. And he brought him in to help, Dante brought Raylan in to help him save Simone when Simone was in trouble in Bloody Heart. Okay, so in Broken Vow, what we're seeing is that there is a threat that's coming, that Riona is coming up against. There's a situation where she goes for one of her routine activities, which is swimming. She goes on a swim and somebody tries to abduct her and drown her while she's on her swim. And her family is like, absolutely not. You need a bodyguard. We need to make sure that you're protected. Knowing how Riona is, she's like, no, I don't need a bodyguard. I've got it handled. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. They call Raylan. And she's like, oh, because the first time that she meets Raylan, Raylan is, basically he's the kind of guy that he's gonna like needle at you and when he knows that he gets under your skin he's gonna go all in for it and he's gonna be even more so and he's attracted to her from the very beginning and so he wants to needle her and he likes her and so he wants to get a rise out of her so it starts out as a forbidden romance in the sense that this is a bodyguard romance he's supposed to be guarding her but he is strong fearless determined and he is an alpha alpha as well. And Riona is all of those things at the same time. And there's some really interesting dynamics that they get into because Riona is dating this guy named Dean. And Dean is a jerk off and a weakling. And, you know, he tries to embarrass Raylan. And so she needs to get rid of him. And so there's some, several circumstances. And so this is a dark romance. And it's a mafia. It's a forbidden romance. And it's also about... Riona has to respect the partner that she's with and she has to allow herself to be vulnerable and she has to feel safe enough with the person to be vulnerable. She is probably a little bit on the spectrum in that she sees numbers and the way that she sees patterns and the way that she interacts with people is very neurotypical and you can see that in her day-to-day -day behavior and how she talks and she likes things very regimented and she likes things a certain way and numbers make sense to to her and finances make sense to her because she can reason through it you know whereas when you're communicating with humans and there's such variances in our individual differences that makes it quite challenging for her to interact with people or for her to feel comfortable interacting with people so that comes across really well so I really like this you know I gave this a four out of five star it's not my favorite book in the series but I really did enjoy it because I enjoyed the dynamic that they get up to and to see how things evolve and to see what it becomes. And he ultimately, you know, has to take her out of Chicago to keep her safe. So it's a forced proximity situation in that they are forced to be together away and they have to kind of navigate that dynamic to see what that's like for them, you know, and how that works out for them. So I was very, very intrigued with it. And so, like I said, I gave it four out of five stars. So that's Broken Vow. And then the last book in the series, I have to say, is really quickly becoming one of my favorites. This is Heavy Crown, and this is the last book in the Brutal Birthright series, first generation. After this, we're going to move into, you know, the second generation, which I'll do a separate video on those. This book is about Sebastian. Now, we've seen in other, where we've had interactions with the Polish where Nessa and Nico got together in Stolen Air, right? We've seen the connection with the Irish, right? In Brutal Prince. And now we have the Italians with the Russians. And the Russian princess in this story, her name is Yelena. And this starts out as a revenge plot where Yelena's father wants to seek out revenge for what the Italians did to the Russians in, in taking their property and taking away their territory when another, the previous Bratva, Pro Prova or Prava or whatever they call the, the leader of the Bratva, when that Bratva guy was taken out, they want revenge for that. 
So a plot is ensued and they send Yelena in under false pretenses to lure Sebastian in and she does just that. But throughout this, you can see that she feels really guilty. She feels upset because she's lying to Sebastian. And as is always the case, whenever you do a fake dating situation, a fake marriage, you know, you go in because you want revenge and you're lying to the person. And, but ultimately what happens? You catch feelings. You start to feel really invested in this and inv invested in the person that you're with and not wanting to ultimately hurt them. But having, feeling obligated to your family, feeling obligated to the revenge plot. So all of these tropes are sort of playing out in this book. Sebastian, it's heavy as the crown in my opinion because everybody is gone. Dante has gone off to Paris. Ada is now married to Callum. Nessa and Miko are off doing their thing. You know, we just finished up with these guys going off to, so they're off doing something separate. And so the only person that's left is Sebastian. And Sebastian was never supposed to be in this life. If you remember from Brutal Prince in the very beginning, Sebastian is an athlete and Sebastian was a basketball star and he had high hopes to play professional basketball. And because of an injury that happens in this book, that was taken away from him. And so now he was the last kid at home, the last one to be with the father, the last one that the father is sharing his hopes and dreams. And now heavy is the burden. It seems like everything is sort of left up to he and Nico, who we introduced in Savage Lover. So he and Nico are left carrying the torches and he's got to be, he's, he's like, do I revenge my family? Do I go with the love of my life? Do I, you know, destroy her family? Do I destroy mine? Heavy is the crown. Heavy is the burden when one is faced with all of this. So this one is absolutely a five out of five star. It is one of my favorite, favorite stories in this series. I really, really enjoy it. And it is page turner. It's exciting. It's really interesting. I love the dilemma and the plight that Sebastian and Yelena are faced with. And it's super, super interesting. So now... At this point, what I would like to do is to tell you my order of my most favorite to my least favorite in the Brutal Birthright series. Okay, so without further ado, I had to really think through this because this is tough. This is really tough because these are really good books. I'm really, really pleased with this. So the first that I'm going to show you is, I was torn. I'm so torn. So I might flip these, but for the moment, I'm going to say, Bloody Heart is my favorite. Angry, angry throughout this book, but it was my favorite. Brutal Prince, angry, <laughs> intense emotion, but Brutal Prince. Heavy Crown. Stolen Air. Broken Vow. And Savage Lover. So you guys, that is it. If you have hung in there with me throughout this long, long video, bravo, hands off to you. Give yourself a little applause button at the bottom or give me a little emoji at the end of this video so that I know that you hung in there with me through this really long video. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. And please, moving forward, like and subscribe. You know, I upload videos three days a week and preferably they're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that is all that I have for you in this crazy long Brutal Birthright review of every book in the series. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I really appreciate your support and your time. And hit that bell notification button so you know the next time I upload a new video. And I'll see you next time in my next video. Bye guys.